episode 104. Welcome. Uh, my name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as Well for Pearls. This is Woolen Spinning. Um, it is a hand spinning podcast. I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. And um, we just had a very eventful weekend here in Vancouver because it was Knit City. Um, Hohi Locatelli was here. Vera Velmaki was here. Gudrun Johnston was here. Uh, who else was here, you guys? Um, there was a lot of people here this weekend. Um, Curious Handmaid was here. I can't, Handmaiden, I, uh, no, Curious Handmaid. I've knit a couple of her shawls and her name is completely escaping me. She has a podcast. Um, somebody will throw in the name in the live chat. Uh, the show is live streamed twice per month and um, it, of course I've got the live chat here on my screen. Um, I try and go back and forth as smoothly as I can. Um, oh yeah, Andrea Mari was at Knit City. Um, so just bear with me. I hope that it's not too disjointed. I know sometimes when there's live streams and live chats it can get really disjointed. So I try to minimize that as much as I can. It sometimes is quite difficult. So it was Knit City here, like I was saying, and we had a lot of people um, in Knit City get, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this year in the Peony Forum, which is a big um, exhibition um, and fairgrounds area in Vancouver, it's right off of um, one of our main um, highway exits. And it's just this huge, massive piece of property in one, and in the exhibition um, hall, uh, which is basically just like a big concrete barn. Um, they do horse shows in there and uh, um, dog shows and there's all sorts of things that happen in there throughout the year. The um, marketplace was and the marketplace every year just seems so much bigger and so much more uh, just stuff like there's just more and more vendors every year and more and more uh, stuff for lack of a better word it's a very knitting heavy show so for this for the spinners like like us um there's definitely there's definitely stuff there for us but it's it's very much focused on on yarn uh, a lot of local knitwear designers release patterns at knit city um it's a big I guess deadline for a lot of them that they use to release books. Tin Can Knits usually has a book that comes out the weekend of Knit City um, and there's a couple of other designers that, that use it as, as a weekend to release new patterns. This year the marketplace was really spread out. It, it felt bigger. There It was bigger because there were more vendors but it was much much more spread out and they really utilized the space this year and so the vendors the booths felt bigger the spaces felt bigger um, it just felt bigger <laughs> there was so much yarn it was just amazing um, for those who are like the die-hard knitters and who really that's their craft and that's what they do you get lost in there um, I didn't buy any yarn. I I knew that I wouldn't for obvious reasons. Um, but for those who've been here for a long time, you know that I really don't buy yarn anymore. There wasn't a lot of there wasn't a ton of fiber. Um, those who are in the chat, like like Katrina was vending, but she she did um, go around and, and look quickly. Um, there was only a few vendors, I would say, like Katrina was one of them. Um, Sarah Elizabeth was another one. She's Sarah Elizabeth. Fiber works, right, Katrina? I don't want to say her business wrong. Sarah's actually one of our patrons, um, but she's so super stinking busy with uh, two kids under two that she doesn't make it into the Slack channel very often. Uh, and she certainly doesn't make it to the live streams because she's so busy, which I totally understand. She's up in the Kootenays in the interior of British Columbia, and she had fiber. So half of her booth was fiber, and then half of her booth was yarn. So, and Katrina's was very, very similarly split. But they were pretty much the only two that had a significant amount of fiber. Um, I always have a really, really good look at Sarah's booth at Fibers West, so I'm kind of saving that for the fall, or for the spring, sorry, because that's our next big show here. And yeah, I, I did get a couple of things. They're, they're not particularly interesting. I don't actually know if I can find them. Um, one, some of you would have seen these in the Slack channel and on Ravelry. They are from Katrina. The Unicorn Scissors. She posted these in the Slack channel, and she also posted them on, on uh, Instagram. I just had to. I don't need another pair of little scissors like that, but um, Nora actually saw the photo on Instagram when I was scrolling, and she really, really liked those. So um, that was really cool. Hi, Becky. Hi, Karma. Um, 
So good to have you guys here. Hi, Mari. Oh, Mari, you made it. Um, oh my goodness. Hi, Felicia. So <laughs> funny story. <laughs> we were, I was on Felicia of Sweet Georgia's live stream this morning. Nora and I actually had a chance to watch. And now Felicia is here on mine, which is hilarious. Um, I don't have as many people as Felicia did this morning. That was really fun, the conversation. Um, if you guys ever want to have a watch on the Sweet Georgia live streams, if you subscribe to their newsletter, the links come through on that. And um, if you subscribe on their YouTube channel and then also um, through the School of Sweet Georgia, you can get updates and stuff. So the other thing that I bought was um, one of the bags from, and their name completely escapes me. If anybody knows, I don't have one of their cards. Um, cuts of Lamb. I have their one that says, um, have you any wool? And it's got a sheep on it. And I really wanted them both just because they go together. Because um, I think this is so cute, especially because we're plant-based and we don't actually eat lamb anymore. <laughs> um, so for us, this is what eat, like having lamb means. So um, I thought it was just really, really cute. And then the last thing that I bought was actually what I went to the show hoping to get, which was the whole reason why I dragged the kids in the first place. I only went for two hours on Sunday. We blitzed through. Um, thank you to everybody who came up and said hello, um, in particular to Lindsay and to Brenda for coming up and saying hello. You are both very kind, and I always love seeing you, Lindsay. Um, and I had a great chat with Felicia really quickly, but the what I really wanted to get and what I really went there for was one of the Big Mama Blue baskets. So this is my third one, and this will be my last one um, this is the I think they call it their medium shopper or their large shopper I'm not sure my other two are awesome um, I don't use the one that I bought my very first basket I actually have it right here so I'll show you let's give you a little basket review for two seconds this is the first basket that I bought and it's still it has fiber on it because you know spinning um, it's still my favorite of the three. It's very large. It's bigger. Like you can see how large it is in relation to, to me. Um, it's not particularly realistic to take with me anywhere. And so I use it as, um, my spinning basket next to my wheel. Um, I'll probably take it when I go away in a few weekends cause it can hold all of my stuff in one basket and I can take it with me. Um, and then I have another one. Oh, I must have put it in the other room. Um, it's in my other room. I've shown it before. It, it's uh, the, the smaller shopper, and it's got a really great side. It's great for taking to Guild. I use it sometimes when I ha I'm, I'm taking a lot of stuff to the kids' school, and I know I'm going to be sitting for a while and knitting after school, and the kids are going to play. I'll take it for that. But it's a little bit too small for um, when I have an actual project that I'm working on that I want to take with me. So this is going to be for taking stuff with me. And of course the color is perfect because as you guys know, this is my favorite color. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. It's got the lacy, the lacy basket work. And that's it. That's all I bought. Um, I didn't get anything else. I did, however, come home feeling really, really super inspired and um, really filled up, if that makes sense, for the first time in a really long time. And that was really positive. And I thought for sure by the end of the day and into the next day, because that was Sunday, I thought into Monday I would kind of go back to no like to normal, my new normal, what has been my normal for the last year. And it hasn't faded. So I'm hoping that maybe it was just a little kick in the butt that I needed. Um, because I have felt really stretched in many, many different directions, which I've talked about on the show before. Katrina and I have talked about it very extensively on Wool and Spinning Radio. And, um, yeah, it's just really, uh, really good to kind of be around like-minded people and people who share the same passions as me. Um, yeah, and you guys know who you are because you're all here. So thank you. Um, so I've got a big show today. I've got a giveaway that we need to give, actually do. Um, and I've got, um, quite a number of projects that I want to talk about, including this one back here, which I made this week. I literally put it on the loom on Sunday night when I got home. That's how fired up I was when I got home from Knit City. So that's pretty good. And, um, so we'll spend most of the show talking about that. And so we're not going to do a spinning growth this week. We will do one, um, next time. So, uh, for giveaways, we had for October, uh, September, sorry, can't believe it's October already. It's just crazy. Um, we had our giveaway. All I wanted you to do was tell me where you're located. Where are you in the world? And, um, 
I had I knew what I was going to do in terms of draws, uh, in terms of drawing the two names. I didn't do it randomly. Let me show you the fiber. We're going to talk about these yarns in a minute. Talk about that thing too in a minute because it's been broken for two years and I finally fixed it. Um, fiber, fiber, fiber. Okay, so I made this and I made this. So these are the exact same groups of fiber. They're both very jewel toned. Um, this one will make a self striping um, yarn. And this one is all blended up and all mixed up. Nora picked the colors by the way. Um, it's all blended up and mixed up and it's going to create more of a blended yarn. So if you want to know how the two yarns are going to spin up, one will look more like this, which will be this one. And one will look more like this, which will be this one. So these were spun from roll eggs, same Pune style, style roll eggs, just like these. Um, this one was the blended one, and this one was the striping one. So sort of an, it gives you an idea of what, what these two bags will look like. So I wanted to do something kind of fun. I wanted to choose the person that was physically the furthest away, which is harder than you think. <laughs> um, so I put the name where you guys were into Google Maps and depending on the flight and how far it was, Europe's not as far as you would think it is. Um, even Eastern Europe is not as far as you think it is and neither is Scandinavia because I thought for sure um, some of those places would win. The furthest place away from, oh, and I thought for sure New Zealand would win because New Zealand's just that little bit further than like Sydney, Australia, for example. But no, the furthest away is uh, Wiggles Hope, Cape Town, South Africa. So congratulations. Um, you won the striped nests. I'm going to send those off to you in South Africa. Um, it is a 23 hour flight from Vancouver. <laughs> and the closest person to me um, I was surprised there was nobody in the Lower Mainland, um, but there, the closest person to me was Mad Stasher 1 in Victoria, BC, which is just a ferry ride away. It's about two hours. Um, so my, my goal, my rule was that you had to take, like it had to be something that you needed some sort of transportation to get to. Like it couldn't be somebody that like I could walk to. So with Victoria, it was a ferry and um, with Cape Town, it was obviously an airplane along with probably other things. You'd probably need like a vehicle to get to the airport and all that kind of stuff. So uh, congratulations to Wiggles Hope. You are going to get the uh, striped Puni style roll eggs. If you could send me your address, please. And Mad Stasher One, if you could send me your address and I'll send those to you in Victoria. Congratulations to both of you. Um, so for um, November's, for the giveaway for November, so the month of October, I have a 100 gram pencil roving um, Superwash Blue Faced BFL Blue Faced Lister um, from Smith and You up in uh, Kamloops. This is actually my last blue um, pencil roving that I want to give away of of uh, Mary Ann's. Um, so for this month, what was the prompt going to be? I wrote it down and then I forgot what it is. Mm. If anybody has any ideas of what they would want for a giveaway, that would be great. Um. I had a great idea for it too, and I forget. Oh well. Tell me what wheel you spin on or spindle. Uh, so, like, if you spin on spindles, what are the spindle? What are some of the spindle makers that you like to use? And what's the wheel that you spin on if you spin on a wheel? And um, I'll do that randomly, and um, I will send this to anywhere in the world. That is open to everybody on Ravelry. For these two, um, I would love to see finished photos of these. So if you spin these up, Wiggles Hope and Mad Stasher, please post the photos um, in the Ravelry group in the October episode thread. That would be awesome if you could do that because I'd love to see the difference in how these two spin up. I've got photos of both of these and I will throw them in um, to the introduction photo feed. Um, so for those who are curious about what these actually look like, you can have a look at them um, in a couple seconds in there. Um, so let's get on with the show because, like I said, it is um, a big show today.
Helios. I see you in Slack. I just can't respond right away. Um, we are going to talk about... Do you guys want to talk about... So I, I put my suffix socks on hold. Um, before I ask you guys what you want to talk about, I put my suffix socks on hold for a bit. They're really hurting my hands to knit because the fabric is so dense. Um, so I, I I did put them on hold, and um, I'm I'm I want to get them done. I need to get them done by the end of the month, but. I put them on hold this week to work on something else to give my 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 left hand a bit of a break. Um, my right hand, um, in the back of my hand, often gets a little bit irritated, but it actually hasn't been bothering me because it's all knit stitch. It's usually purling that really bugs me, but um, this time around, my left hand was hurting, and I think it's because I was having to hold the fabric so tightly to, to knit because the fabric is so dense. So I just put it on hold a little bit for um, a couple of days, and. Um, I'll pick them back up this weekend. So it's Canadian Thanksgiving here this weekend, and um, we've got some time off. James is off for five days, which is lovely. It's um, a one time a year uh, teacher's retreat that his school has. Um, it's the only time all year that they have any pro Ds. So they have stats, statutory holidays off, but they have no other time off whatsoever. So I really look forward to this five day weekend because it's all they get all year. So for that big chunk other than spring break and Christmas. So um, we've got some plans to do some things. Katrina and I are actually getting together, so it'll be kind of nice, um, a nice weekend. Um, so why don't we talk about this? Because it's sitting right here, and I know people are curious about it, and I would really like to talk about it because my husband doesn't want to hear about it anymore. So this is what it looks like on. It's like the perfect size. It's just awesome. So I, my family, it was driven by me. We gave my mom, oh, thank you, Becky. Um, same to you. Um, we, uh, we gave my mom for her birthday a year ago, a year and a bit ago, a sample at Loom, which is by Ashford. Um, it comes in this little box. It, this one's a 10 inch. Um, and it is, um, it's a great little loom for somebody who's never woven before, um, who doesn't know if they want to get into it or not, and just wants something really super manageable. My mom has um, issues with her neck, so she can't, I've got fluff in my eyes, so she can't hold anything um, particularly heavy because these lean against a table in front of you and you hold them at sort of a 45 degree angle while you weave and you can get stands for them and I think if my mom ever gets into weaving on a rigid heddle seriously I think we would probably do that for her um, but these re I think I took the price off because it was a gift but if anybody knows off the top of their head how much these retail for they're not expensive um, I mean in relation to other fiber arts uh, tools because some stuff is so expensive. These are actually really affordable. So we got her the 10 inch one. These come in the 16 as well but I was chatting with the, one of the guys at Ashford at Knit City this past weekend and he was actually saying that he personally would actually recommend going into the 16 inch rigid heddle over the 16 inch sample at Loom um, because the rigid heddle comes with a couple of extra um, features that the samplet doesn't. So I guess the 16 inch, for those who kind of know weaving talk, you can do double weave on the rigid heddle 16 inch, but I'm not sure, but it didn't sound like you can on the samplet. I might be wrong and I might have heard him wrong, but that's sort of what it sounded like. Um, and there's lots of different um, read heddle options um, for on the 16 inch compared to the samplet 16 inch. Um, I, I'm not really sure what all the ins and outs are. I'm not an Ashford dealer. I don't know all the details, but he said like, you know, yeah, this rigid heddle 16 inch is a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Um, so anyways, the, um, we gave this to my mom. I have a 48 inch rigid heddle Ashford loom. It's huge. Um, I was really um, excited to get it and I was really excited to have it. It's an awesome loom. I've actually got it worked up right now which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then I'm lending it to Katrina actually so that she can make some fabric with her daughter. Um, but this little loom is just so easy to use and it's so um, accessible. So the, the reed that comes on it is a seven and a half. So it's just this little, little thing here. 
And you can get other sizes, and they're for different weights of yarn. Um, and all the information is, is on um, the Ashford website. Um, and there's a great book called, um, we, um, what's it called, you guys? Weaving on a Little Loom. Oh, shoot. I left it in the other room. It's an awesome book. Anyways, this is what it looks like. And you can get other reads for it. So I've actually gone ahead. My, my mom doesn't know that I've done this yet. Um, but I feel like she lent it to me. So she should know that I would do something like this. I've actually ordered the um, uh, 10 and 12 and a half so that I can do some finer stuff on this. Um, but this is how big it is. Like, it's not... And it's super, super light. Um, they're just tiny. So I got home from Knit City on Sunday night. And I was all fired up. Um, and I was really excited about stuff, like I said, for the first time in a long time. And this yarn <laughs> has been hanging over me forever. This is my combo spin that I did. There's Hello Yarn in here, Nest Fiber Studio, and created by LCB. There's two braids of... Um, uh, Nest Fiber Studio, one of created by LCB and one of um, Hello Yarn. And you, if you guys go back to some of the um, episodes that I released when I was spinning this, and I'll put those links in the show notes for you. Um, I don't love this yarn. I don't love how it turned out. I don't love. I didn't love how it swatched up when I knit my swatches. I've tried a couple of shawls with it. I didn't like them. Um, it's just not. Um, my cup of tea. There's a lot of barber pulling in it. Um, there's it's stripes because of um, every strip of fiber that I spun had the color that you have to work through, and then um, it, it's just not my favorite yarn. It, I know these big combo spins, sweater spins. They were really, really popular on Instagram and Ravelry. There's a couple of articles in spinoff about them, um, and people really love this technique. I, I think that's awesome. People have got some gorgeous sweaters out of some of their combo spins that they've done. It does give you a sweater quantity of yarn if you spin up four braids of fiber. Um, it's And I think um, some people are even doing like six and eight braids and combo spinning them. It's just not my cup of tea. Yes, the book is Inventive Weaving on a, on a Little Loom. It's an awesome book. I'll link to it in the show notes. Anyways, long story short, I've been really struggling with what to do with this yarn. You guys know about that. So this is my second skein. Um, I had two skeins. One skein was a little bit finer spun than this skein was. This skein is more like a sport weight, and this skein was a fingering weight. Um, I don't know why they came out so differently. I It just is the way it worked out. So this is the leftovers of my weaving. So this is the little skein that was left over from my weft. Um, I don't know exactly how much yardage I used. I think there was 350 yards in this skein, and this is 27 yards that's left over. So I roughly, I think, used 320 yards, roughly. The reason why I say roughly brings us to this little gizmo here. Um, this is one... It, <laughs> It's, it's a tool by Nancy's Dick Knacks. I bought it a long time ago. Well, a few, a couple years, a few years ago anyhow. So it's not like 10 years old, but it, when I was winding the yarn, I use it for counting yardage. So funny story, this, some of you will recognize this actually. Let's see if you guys in the chat channel know what these are. Do you know what this is? Does anybody know? Is anybody out there a fisherman? Do you know where you get these? So, I bought this. I bought this. Like, they, it all comes as a thing. It broke almost immediately. Um, and actually, Felicia said she had one of those and it broke. Yeah, mine broke almost immediately. So these are line counters. You're right, Mari. Um, the fishermen use them for their lines. Um, I don't know if it's the weight of the yarn or the yarn feeding through it. Um, the amount of yarn, I have no idea. Anyways, mine broke almost right away. I think I used it like three or four times. So I went to Army and Navy, which is a local, um, they're not really a department store, but they're kind of like a, I don't know how you guys who are local would, would describe Army and Navy. There's one on the downtown east side. Like they service kind of, they've got whatever they have is what they have. But they've always been really well known for, um, fishing stuff 
and hunting stuff, which is so weird. Um, so I went in there and I talked to the guy and I took this with him and I told him that I was not using it as a line counter for fishing line, but that I was using it for yarn. And he looked at me really funny and I just said, I'm a weaver. <laughs> and he said, oh, okay. Like that was, that made it okay. Um, kind of made me laugh because the kids are looking at me going, no, you're not. And I was like, just, just go with it. <laughs> um, anyways, cause this was before I got my rigid heddle. Um, I've had this forever. Anyways, the guy said the one that was on the thing um, was, I guess we can't get them up here in Canada, but he said this one that I got from Army and Navy is a really, really good quality one. And he said it should last putting um, yarn and um, more than just like fishing line through it. And it should be fine and it should last. And if it doesn't, he said to bring it back. Well, that was over a year ago, almost two years ago that I got this thing. So I feel like I probably can't take it back now if it doesn't work. But um, he said that you really have to get good quality ones of these for them to last and for them to work for any length of time. So anybody who's local, go to Army and Navy. Um, Army and Navy here in Langley does carry them still because I saw them last week. Um... Yeah, you're right, Mari. So Mari's saying I'm I'm half reading, half half talking to you guys. Um, Army and Navy surplus store in the states. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. I'm sure it's the same the same um, um, franchise. Um, up here, they're not a military store though. Up here, they're um, like fishing and hunting. You can get like winter coats for the kids. You can get like bulk food. Um, you can get housewares. Like it's n n there's no military stuff. Um, so they're exceedingly hard to get. I've been trying for the past five months. Army and Navy no longer carries them and neither do fishing shops because they now come on reels. So Mari, the one here in Langley still carries them. So I'll go in and see if I can get one for you um, because I saw them last week. They still have them. Um, so anyways, if you, if you can get one or if you can get your local fishing shop to bring one in for you or like bulk buy them for all of your friends, um, hopefully it'll last. So the reason why I don't know exactly what my yardage is on this is I never, I didn't have a, my line counter anymore. So I had the rough yardage from my skein winder, but I find my skein winder isn't, it's not perfect. So I think that this was 320 yards of weaving. Um, out of that rabbit hole for just a sec, um, this, the wet, the warp, um, took about two thirds of the yarn and the weft took about a third. So, um, whatever two thirds of 320 is, if anybody could do the, that math really quickly, um, it's about just over 200 yards of yarn for the warp and then, um, about a hundred yards for the weft. Um, and it turned out really well. I just love it. I'm completely smitten. I have not washed it yet. This is unwashed. Um, it still, um, has that kind of, you know, um, it's just not finished yet, you know, like it has that crisp look to it still. Um, I'm not totally sure how I'm going to wash it. I don't really want to push it, put it straight into the washing machine. I, I think I'm going to full it in the sink. I've done that before. And then I will, uh, put it in the dryer for, for a couple minutes and, uh, and, and just keep checking it. Um, I did a twisted fringe, which I think turned out really, really well. Um, I did get a fringe twister finally because the twisting of the fringe really aggravates the back of my right hand. Um, but I did do this by hand cause it's such a small fringe. Um, I didn't break it out and I hem stitched. I was a very good little girl. I did everything I was supposed to do. I hem stitched. I did my fringe, which I never do. <laughs> I did all the things. Oh, Mari, you ordered one on Amazon. Okay, keep us posted, because if it works and if it comes, I'll post the link to what you found on Amazon. Um, I love, love, love how this turned out. I have some photos that I that I threw up in, the, that I, you know, if you go back and rewatch the show, I, th I threw it up, threw them up in the intro. Um, let me switch cameras. So it ended up creating like a plaid. So all that striping in that yarn created a plaid, which is really cool. And I think unlike with the knitting, because you guys remember how much I was um, struggling with the knitting of this of this yarn. In in the knitting, the yarn created this striping, um, and it wasn't. 
it didn't highlight what I liked about the yarn. Um, it didn't highlight these colors, these these gorgeous blues and golds and browns and some of these tealy greens. Um, there's some cream in there. It didn't highlight any of that. Um, and instead, in the knitting, it kind of the yarn got because it's striped so much, and it and it, of course it was it's most it's a lot of it's barber pulled. It just kind of got lost. Um, the, the beauty of the yarn just got lost in the, um, in the striping. And I think the weaving really highlights what I really loved about this yarn, which are the colors, right? And so it creates like this plaid effect. I love how there's this, that goldy, it's, it's coming up, I think it's coming up brown for you guys, but it's actually rust orange that, with this cream stripe. I love how that runs down that one side. It really, I think, gives the scarf that balance that it needs. Um, so anyways, I could wax poetic about this all day. <laughs> um, I had this warped on the loom, on the little samplet. I had it warped in about 40 minutes. Um, and it's just a peg loom, a peg peg style uh, warping. So you put the peg at the one end. Let me just um, fold this up. You put the peg at the one end of the table. I used my dining room table. I put my dining room table to the full um, length. And um, you put the peg at the one end. You put the loom at the other end. Secure the loom to the table. Secure the peg to the table. And you literally just wrap it around the, the warp. You pull it through the um, reed. So these reeds, you pull it through each of these slots, which sounds really fiddly, but it's actually really fast on a rigid heddle. Um, and then I threaded all of my, um, threaded them through all the holes. You can see how that works. And there's some great videos on YouTube on how to warp up a uh, rigid heddle. Um, it just kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. And then I, you know, just um, started weaving. So in terms of the weaving process, um, I really tried to beat my, I'm going to switch things around a bit. I really tried to beat, um, the, the weft down quite a bit. Like I really tried to keep it quite tight. Um, so it's a little bit weft dominant, which means that, um, the, the weft covers a little bit more of the warp than, um, giving it a slightly unbalanced weave structure. Um, for those who aren't super, super familiar with weaving, it just means that more of the weft is visible compared to the warp. The only reason why I did that was because I knew that I had enough yarn. Because if I had to, I could have skeined, the, I could have um, um, put this into a center pole ball and I could have just added that to the end to get the length that I needed. Because I really wanted to maximize yardage. I was pretty sure that I would only need what was in the skein to finish it up but I um, I wanted to utilize the entire length of the warp, so, or as much as I possibly could. As it was, I only actually, I find with the samplet, I would love to hear from you guys in the chat channel that um, have, have experience with these smaller looms. I find compared to my large 48 inch, there wasn't nearly as much waste on this loom. Um, I don't know if that's a thing, is that a thing? But it was certainly something I experienced. I, I only had a few inches on either end that I had to cut off that I couldn't use in the fringe. And I don't know if that's because when you're warping on a peg, when you've got that super wide loom, your warp threads have to come so far to all get to that center point that your outer threads end up being quite a bit longer than your center threads. I think it's where a case can be made for using a warping board or a warping mill for um, those bigger uh, rigid heddle looms and then warping them backwards with a, what are they called when you have the pre-done warp um, and you load it on instead of doing it to the warping peg um, because I, there's a lot of waste with the big loom because all those warping threads have to travel to that that peg and then they're quite a bit longer than the center threads so I find it creates a lot of waste whereas with this I didn't have very much oh indirect warping versus direct warping thank you Felicia um, so I didn't have as much waste so that's me um, working away the other thing with rigid heddle weaving and I think this is true of all weaving but I know for me um, 
I really like working with the shuttle stick. I f you can on my big 48 inch. I tend to use my um, my shuttle, um, and I use a boat shuttle and I throw it across. But I find with this little loom um, that I really like the stick. It works really really well. You don't need a boat shuttle with these little looms. It's just not. It does. It just doesn't make any. It doesn't make you any more efficient. Um, and it's nice not having all those ends to uh, weave in afterwards because you've got a lot more you know, ends when you've got, you just can't fit as much on a boat shuttle as you can on a stick. Um, that said, just like any weaving, working on your edges is what I find the most challenging. And as I found as I got further and further along, my edges got better and better and better. And I kind of fell back into a really good rhythm. So the last half of this actually is very clean and my edges look really good. And then the first half, they're a little bit a little bit hit and miss. There's some places where my edges are a little bit better than others. And there's lots of tricks in that book, that inventive weaving on a little loom. There's tons and tons and tons of um, really good little tricks on how to improve your edges and how to get that. So there's like the bubble technique where you can throw the um, uh, weft yarn through and you create this bubble and then you pull the... Um, the heddle down to beat it or you can do what I'm doing here which is the 45 degree and then beat it down. Um, I know one of the ladies in our guild has said absolutely don't hold onto this side and secure it as you beat um, to manipulate your your weft threads too much. Um, she, she said you'll get a better edge. I've seen it done both ways um, and I'm still experimenting with both but the getting your edges right or it, it's definitely a trick. It's definitely a um, um, takes a lot of practice. So yeah, it was really fun to make and I'm really glad that I did. So, um, yes, the warping board definitely creates a lot less waste and I think it's more efficient in some ways. The warping maybe takes a little bit longer, but, um, it's, it's also just, um, yeah, it's a lot of waste on those big looms, on the big 48. Um, I find it's a lot of waste. Um, apparently, the guy at Ashford was telling me that the 24-inch rigid heddle is actually their best seller um, of everything that they sell, their four, of, like wheels, looms, everything. The 24-inch rigid heddle is their most popular loom, which I thought was really interesting. Or their most popular product, which I thought, was, yeah, was just kind of cool. Oh, that's so true, Mari. So she says some um, edge issues are not unique to weaving. It's a downfall of knit, knit edges as well. That's so true. My biggest, <laughs> I'm not like a perfectionist perfectionist. Like I'm not like a, like a finickety kind of person. But my biggest pet peeve is a really poorly done garter stitch edge. When you've got garter every single row and you and you and your tension is right and your yarn is right and your needle size is right and your knitting tension is right, it makes the most beautiful edge. And when it's when something's off, the yarn weight's not right or the needle size wasn't isn't right or your knitting gauge isn't right, it just oh it just ruins your garter stitch edge. And I just love that look of a garter stitch edge. So while we're just finishing up, you guys can watch this for a little bit longer. I'll leave this up for a second. Um, you'll remember this yarn. This is my Merino Alpaca Silk Nylon Blend that I spun. Um, for those who are part of this How I Spin content on Patreon, you will recognize this because it was last month's yarn that I um, talked about. You will also notice that it is no longer in a shawl. <laughs> so this was um, the Sunwalker Shawl by Melanie Berg. Um, it is no longer the Sunwalker Shawl by Melanie Berg. I ripped it yesterday. I pulled it all out um, and I skeined it. I used my handy dandy line counter, which is actually what made me fix it. Um, and I uh, counted the yardage because I thought I had over a thousand yards, but I wanted to be sure. I actually have 921 yards and I will show you guys what I did. You're going to laugh. So I have to find my pictures. So it is now this. Hang on, I got to I got I have to turn on auto uh, I have to rotate my phone. This phone is so annoying. It's the cheapest worst phone, but it won't die. So it's now this. <laughs> it's now on my 48 inch rigid heddle. All 530 yards. So let me switch my cameras around while I talk about this. Um, so 
I decided to rip it out. I wasn't loving it. Um, and you guys know how I feel about that. And it was striping quite a bit. And I didn't feel like it was really highlighting the things about the yarn that I really loved. So I ripped it out. <laughs> so I, um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was going to rip it out and then I was going to find a different pattern. And then I was going to leave the Sunwalker where it was put it on some scrap yarn and just leave it and start a different project with the other half of the yarn. Um, and then I decided to weave with it. <laughs> so I was so inspired after I finished this that I thought, well, maybe I should, oh, and I'll give you guys next, next show after I wash and finish this, I'll give you the final details on it. I'm going to weigh it. I'll, I'll finish it. Um, like wet block, wet finish it. I mean, and I'll measure it and then you guys will know what the, what it is finished because I think it's about eight inches across um, it's about 64 inches um, long right now but I'll measure it all and give you guys all the all the details next week and I'll also show it to you finished because it'll be dry I didn't want to do it last night because I knew it wouldn't be dry for the show and I knew you guys had seen it on Instagram so I wanted to share it with you anyways this yarn so I decided to throw it on my loom um, I'm not too concerned if I don't have enough yardage for the weft because I can always spin some more I've got a little bit more of this uh, fiber in my stash and um, so I used approximately 500 uh, so what I did was I took the 900 and based on my experience in the past and based on my um, things that I've written down in the past I usually use about two-thirds of the yarn in the warp because of the waste the loom waste and about a third of the yarn in the weft and like I said if I run out of weft it's not a big deal because I can spin some more so I decided to there is a theme here Rebecca <laughs> so I decided to um, so this is a third of the yarn this is um, um, 300 um, just over 300 yards about 380 yards and I used the other 500, 550 yards to um, warp it. So I will start on this. I'll post some pictures this weekend because I'm hoping to work on it this afternoon for half an hour, get the hem stitching done and just kind of get it started and see what it looks like. But um, already, and I can't even remember what heddle I used. I think I used my 12.5. I didn't want to go up to the 15 because it would create too dense of a fabric. Um, I wanted something really loose and really open. So... Um, I've got it all warped up and we'll see how it goes. So I will keep you guys posted. I don't think it'll be done. Well, it might be done by next show because we're having, we're live streaming a week early today because we've got a field trip next week that I need to go on. And then we have another week before the next live stream. So yeah, I bet you it'll be done by next show. So um, fingers crossed, I'll have that to show you next show. Nora's already told me that she's gonna take it, that it's hers. <laughs> So I tried to talk her into some, um, Felicia, you'll remember, um, it was Superwash Targi. It was the Open Hands. What was the colorway? It was a club colorway. It was celebrating the, uh, one of the Sweet Georgia anniversary. I think it was the 10 year anniversary. It was the colorway that you did. Um, Nora found that hand spun. It was the Superwash Target for the club that month. She found that yarn in my stash and it's that hot pink. It's that sweet Georgia pink. She found it and she pulls it out and she said, I want a blanket out of this mama. And she just stood there holding it. And I was like, but Nora, there's not really enough there. Like I could do a scarf for you. There's more than enough yardage for a scarf like this. No mama. I want a blanket. So then she goes back into my stash and she pulls out um, the colorway that was uh, one of the club colorways for Sweet Georgia again because I spun all that yarn for the club for those few years. Um, it was the one when, when Nina was born, that the purples, and she pulled it out and she's holding the, the Superwash Targi and then she's got the one that was, was Eden's colorway, or Nina Eden's color colorway. She's got the two and she's like, there, that's enough, Mama. I want a blanket. <laughs> I was like... Mm, no, <laughs> I didn't actually say that. I placated her, but, um, so she's told me that this is going to be her blanket. So it's her colors. I get it. There's the pink in there. It makes sense. Um, Nora's always trying to take things from me. Oh, you guys, before I go any further, I have to tell you. So, uh, on mm, Monday and Nora, so Nora's special helper at school this week. 
and they get to do it for the whole week because otherwise doing show and tell every class is just too much and she goes three days a week so monday wednesday friday so on monday um she's special helper but she also gets to do her show and tell and they only do the one for the week so special helper all week and then show and tell the one day so she's rummaging through my stuff upstairs and i said to her what are you doing like what and she's got the yarn she's got nina's yarn and she's got the sweet georgia anniversary yarn and she's holding on to it she's got it under her arm she's like walking around like this oh she, she's like this walking around like trying to like hold on to it and she's rummaging through my stuff and I was like what are you doing like get out of there well she was looking for my Turkish spindles so she found the bag that has all of the pieces of my Turkish spindles because I keep them all taken apart because I have a class size of Turkish, a class number of Turkish spindles, even though I have have yet to design the class and actually teach it, I have a class size of Turkish spindles. And um, I will get there. I will put it together one day. And uh, <laughs> she found them and she pulls them out. And she's like, I want to take these to show and tell and I want to show people how to spin yarn. And my friends want to learn about spindles. And I said, really? Like, I thought you were going to like take Owl. That's her lovey no mama I'm gonna take the spindles can you help me put them together and I said okay so we put them all together so we put two together because I have a class of class number so I've got I've got a class I've, I've got seven plus one that would be that's mine that I'm never gonna let go of or part with and so I took the other ones away and I put two together and I attached yarn on them and I should have left one down here to show you guys but I tied it onto the bottom of the Turkish spindle and you know how the Turkish spindles have the arms. I wrapped it around the base, the cop, and then I hooked it onto the top, to the top arm and just some Cascade 220 and I did that on two of them and then yeah and she's four now, can you believe it? She's four and a half so it's like just the ideas that they get. Um, and then she wanted a third one to take because she wanted to show them how you can travel with them in your pocket like mommy do, like mama does when we go to the park. My kids don't call me mommy anymore. They call me mama now. I don't know why. It's not a thing up here usually in Canada. Like it's usually mommy or, or mum. But anyways, um, I'm mama now apparently. And, and to show her friends how to actually put it together. So I was like, so much for taking one thing. She takes the three spindles in my bag. Um, she actually took my pay it forward bag that I showed you guys last show that I was so pleased to get, my my, my chickens one. Um, she actually took that. She put them all in there because she loves that bag. Um, thank you again to Kay and Tammy. And um, she goes toddling off to school. And I was like, okay, well, we'll see what this is, like how this goes. And I said to her before she went to school, I'm like, okay, what are you taking for show and tell? What are they called? Spindles, mama. And she's looking at me like I'm crazy. And I said, what are they for? Like, what are they supposed to do? Because I'm thinking her teachers are going to ask her and she's not going to know. Mama, they're for making yarn. And she turns around and walks into her classroom. I was like, okay, here we go. Well, everybody was talking about it today. So we get to school to drop her off. Everybody's talking about Nora's making yarn. She's got these spindles. Everybody was Googling it. And they were looking at Turkish spindle spinning videos. <laughs> And a couple of the parents were like, you don't actually like make yarn, do you? I was like, um, yep. <laughs> She's wearing a hand spun sweater. <laughs> I thought you guys, sorry for the tangent, but um, yeah. So that's what Nora took with her to show and tell. <laughs> Yeah, she's already teaching. Oh my goodness, it was hilarious. And all, like, three of the moms came up to me today and were like, was, what was that, the Nora? Because my daughter was trying to tell me and we're Googling all this stuff and I wasn't sure. And I was like, oh yeah, no, you had it right. Like, that was what it was. It was a Turkish spindle. And I guess a lot of people had stumbled on the YouTube video. I've, I've talked about it before on the show, but not for, not recently. The, um... Uh, Abby Frankmont does a uh, introduction to Turkish spindling video and I guess a whole bunch of them that's what they stumbled on was that video and they're like is that really like what you do I was like um yeah <laughs> think sleeping beauty yep <laughs> anyways silly just crazy stuff um I guess the kids just they see it so much right and they see me doing it and they see my friends doing it and they um like they see Katrina bringing her wheel when we go to guild and like they it's not foreign to them um they've been over at my friend Diana's house lots and lots they've seen her crafting room and they've seen all of her wheels and it's not they've gone to Sweet Georgia to the studio with me I don't know how many times there's all all the stuff there so it's not like weird to them but like to all these other parents they're like 
oh, okay, well, what kind of weird stuff are you into? But they were all they were all so good about Googling it. Like, they all looked it up, which I thought was really, really cool. So, anyhow. Um, oh, that's cool. Your three-year-old grand monkey mastered pinch release, pinch release, run it on the bobbin. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good. That's such a great thing. I, one thing I w miss about not having my polywog anymore, because I, I did sell my Spinolution polywog, um, that was a great wheel for Nora to play with and James was playing with it quite a bit and I do kind of, I am kind of bummed that we don't have that little wheel anymore um, because it's indestructible, you can't break it, it's just like um, such a great little wheel for kids. Um, it just, it was a bit too small for me and it was sitting too much. So, and my friend Judy ended up, um, she wanted it so and, and took it, so which is awesome, it's gone to a great home. But I do kind of miss having that wheel because for kids, it is a great little wheel. So anyways, um, we're, we'll move on. I, I need to talk about this yarn. This is my opposing ply, three ply. Um, we talked about this yarn quite a bit last week and about making this yarn. Um, there's a couple of things about this yarn that is very odd that I'm surprised happened. Um, I can switch the cameras if you guys want. Um, with it, just speak up in the chat channel if you guys want me to move the cameras because I can put the product, the 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 uh, yarn yarn um, camera up again. So this yarn came out um, surprisingly balanced. It has a lot of ply twist in it, um, and I've actually thought about throwing it through the wheel one more time to tighten it up even a little bit more. Um, my friend. Kelsey, when she made this yarn, it was quite a bit kinkier and um, it it really, it didn't go together particularly nicely. Like the, like it wasn't super aligned and the, the yarn was sort of a bit like, you know, um, it really showed that that third um, strand was, was just so much more twisted than the other two. And this is not like that at all. Um, it's very balanced, it's very smooth, um, it's not particularly, that third ply doesn't look particularly different, different from the other two. So let me just back up a little bit and I'll explain how you, how, how I, how I made this yarn. We got, I got the idea from my friend Kelsey, but I've been wanting to make it for a really long time. It's been on my, my spinning bucket list for a long time. It's from the, um, the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs by Sarah Anderson, which I talked about quite a bit last show. Um, and two of the strands were, so two of the singles were spun um, Z twist, and then the third one was spun um, S twist, so going counterclockwise, and then they, the three strands were plied together. So it should have made a much more imbalanced yarn, and actually if you guys will hang on just a sec. Um, it's going to be very interesting, I agree, Alex, to see if this yarn actually wears any longer. Um, and I don't know if it's because this is a superwash merino, if it just didn't um, behave the same way. Shoot. I took my, my bookmark out, and now I don't know where it is. The page. It'll just take me a sec to find it. Oh, opposing plies, there it is. So I don't know if you guys can see this. The four ply opposing ply is definitely more, um, hang on, I'm gonna find a better photo. It's definitely more, um, I was gonna say unbalanced than the three ply in the photos, but I think that might just be the photo. I'm not. I'm not sure. I need to keep doing some more experimenting. So the the photo. So if you can see the three strand opposing ply and then the four strand opposing ply, the four strand one looks like it's a little bit more um, twisted than the three ply. Like in terms of the yarn behavior itself. Um, but the interesting thing about the about this yarn is that the third ply really is twisted. Like it's really twisted. Here's a, here's a part of the yarn that you can really see. And I think the camcorder is actually a bit better for you to see this than the, um, than the uh, um, 
DSLR. Um, you see that white strand in there? It is so twisted in there. Um, and then the purple, right in that part of the yarn, the two singles were both purple. They just happened to line up right there. Um, and you can see that that one strand is significantly more twisted. Um, so it's definitely the principle is there. Um, the yarn, that that third strand is certainly significantly higher twist than the other two. It just, I don't know if it's because there isn't really any active crimp in this yarn because of the superwash quality or if it's um, because so much of the original characteristics of the fiber has been taken out from that process um, that you sort of lose some of that um, crimpy sort of bouncy elastic -y goodness um, because Felicia, or sorry Felicia, um, Kelsey was working with um, Cheviot um, that was raw, um, not super wash. Um, so raw in the sense that like it wasn't super washed. Um, it was just, just the Cheviot. It's, it's a local Cheviot that we can get out here in the valley. I have some in my stash. So it's left me very, very curious if I make this yarn again, if I um, would maybe uh, with a different fiber, and I'm thinking about trying it with the Cheviot just because I have it in my stash. Um, if maybe... I would get a different result because the plied yarn is, like I said, that third strand is really twisted. It's just not making the yarn really super kinky and twisted. Um, and it'll be really interesting to see, um, like Suzanne said, how is it, was it Suzanne that said that? Uh, oh, Alex, sorry, it, whether or not it'll wear better because like, like we talked about last show and I'll, I'll just, for those who missed the show, cause I know sometimes people can't tune in or they get caught up all at once. Um, this is a photo at the bottom here. Um, this is the photo of the heel that was the traditional three ply. That was the opposing ply. Am I on the right one? No, I'm on the wrong one. Sorry guys, I'm on the wrong, um, the wrong sock photo. Hang on. She has a couple of different things in here that are where she compares the two socks, which I love. So that one was the uh, chain ply versus traditional three ply. Oh my goodness, where did the opposing plies go? I just had it. I have so many stickies and so many um, bookmarks in this book of stuff that I've earmarked for next year <laughs> that it's getting hard to like utilize this book just in an, in a day-to-day -day basis. So this one here is the traditional three ply after wear and this one here is the opposing ply. So that's the difference and it'll be interesting to see if this yarn ends up being the same. So I went through my stash la la These are all of my superwash yarns that I have in my stash currently. So um, what I thought I would do, this is a three ply opposing ply in superwash merino. There's nothing else in it, it's just superwash merino. So what I'm gonna do is take either something that I've already spun out of my stash that's a superwash, just plain superwash, um, and do a three ply um, and compare it side by side, like, cause I need something that I'm comparing apples to apples with the base. Um, so I'm thinking, where did it go? I have one in my stash that's, um, it's, that's not Merino nylon. That's just a hundred percent Merino. And I'm going to spin that up into a traditional three ply. I'll work on that over the next few months and compare these two side by side and see how they wear and how they wear differently. But also the other thing, I took it out of, out of this basket already. I'm doing a four ply right now. So I started it on my wheel. I didn't bring it over to show you because I knew we'd have so much to talk about in this show. Um, I am going to spin that one up to, into a four ply. It's a 100% superwash merino as well. And then I'll do a three ply just traditional three ply 100% superwash merino which I have in my basket there somewhere and then this one and we'll see how the three pairs of socks wear and how they differ from one another and um, we'll see it'll probably take the next like year for me to kind of go through the entire experiment 
but um, I'm gonna slowly spin that basket down with all the different sock yarns that I wanna try and see what wears the best. Um, the other thing that I, oh, Becky says fiber porn, that's hilarious. Yeah, I should show you guys. If you want to know, just let me know in the chat channel if you guys want to know what's in that basket because I've got a big variety of fiber in there. Um, what, so I was, um, I threw on a pair, I wear just like sports socks in the morning when I go to the gym and I grabbed one out of, one pair out of my bag, out of my drawer um, the other morning and I normally wouldn't have really paid much attention because I just wear them in the morning and then they go in the wash as soon as I get home. The pair that I was wearing, they actually need to go in the garbage. They're cotton socks, but they're cotton uh, cotton nylon and the whole bottom of the sole, and I never, like I said, I wouldn't have even noticed because I'm like half asleep at that time of the morning, is completely worn through. The cotton is completely gone. They're completely disintegrated. I guess they're old. Um, which makes sense because I bought those socks when I lived in Vancouver still, which was 10 years ago now. Um, the nylon is all still intact. It's completely perfect. So it's they're completely nylon on the bottom, which is really interesting. Um, they're the first pair of socks that I've actually worn through the, the natural fiber and now all that's left is the nylon. So um, we always want to know what's in your stash. Okay, <laughs> you guys are so funny. All right, and then I will say goodbye after that. Okay, so the braid that is the, going to be the four ply that's on my wheel right now that I didn't bring to show you is a braid of Sweet Georgia. It's a fiber club colorway that was February of 2016, maybe 2017, maybe Felicia or um, Katrina will remember. It's one of the ones that Katrina spun, um, and it was um, Wildflower. So that's on my wheel right now, and it's these gorgeous oranges and... Uh, um, um, like a sort of a the green is all outside right now but I can't describe it it's not really forest green but it's not really lime green it's sort of a just green um, there's some yellow okra yellows in there like this color um, 2017 thank you um, yeah just a gorgeous braid so it's on my wheel right now so that's one of them that was from here this is a uh, my last uh, Smith and you this was always earmarked for socks because it's kind of a purpley color this is a merino nylon from Smith and You. This is my most favorite colorway from um, um, Kinfolk Yarn and Fiber. This is the Agate colorway, um, Superwash Targi. Love this colorway. Love it, love it, love it. Um, this was um, from a uh, um, um, completely twisted and arbitrary. It's a Groupon Ravelry. They do uh, spin alongs four times a year, I think, and they, um, I don't know if they're still doing it. Um, I don't really check any Ravelry groups except for um, ours, Will and Spinning, and Sweet Georgia, and I do look at Ply Magazine. I do look at that Ravelry group. I just find it's too much, too many places to constantly be checking, um, but it was one of their spin-alongs, and it was Into the World, and this was called Moscow Mule, and this is Superwash Targi. I've had this for a long time. Um, the eating grapes off wallpaper, which was those, those socks that I finished a while ago. That was the other colorway that they designed for that. Um, this is some hedgehog fibers, merino nylon. So fun. Neon. This is where, um, she just pours the dye all over it. It's just space dyed. This is nest fiber club from February, 2017. This is superwash merino. So this is going to be. Uh, this is the one that I was looking for. This is going to be the traditional three ply. That's going to be the control for that sock experiment. I'm not sure if I'm going to chain ply this or do a traditional three ply because the back of it is these gorgeous purples and so pretty. So I don't know if I want to um, preserve that those colors or if I want to see them blended up. I'm thinking probably blended up because if you know me that you'll know I love that. Um, this is Sweet Georgia Superwash BFL in Firestarter. I've been coveting this braid. I still don't know what it wants to be. Um, I think that one was a Spinzilla colorway, I think. I've got fiber in my eye. Um, I think that was a Spinzilla colorway, wasn't it? I can't remember. 
um, more Sweet Georgia Fiber. So I don't know if you guys will remember, I have talked about them quite a bit. Um, they're, those socks that I spun for Mike, they were the first pair of hand spun socks that I ever made and he felted them in the washing machine and I didn't talk to him for 24 hours. Um, they were in BFL silk. Um, that was a few years ago when we did that spin along, knit along with Sweet Georgia. Um, this is, he, after he washed, you know, felted them, it wasn't on purpose, but still, um, I, uh, I told him I would do him another pair, but I just haven't done them yet. So that was in the rusted colorway, but this is the still water colorway. And I did promise him some socks. So I'm actually gonna try to get these done for his birthday, which is in June. So that gives me almost a year. Another um, Sweet Georgia colorway, this is Panda. This was August 2017 Fiber Club in Moonshine. I love this colorway. Love it, love it, love it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I'm thinking a traditional four ply, um, which would be kind of fun. This is my absolute most favorite uh, braid in my entire stash. <laughs> I have been keeping this and keeping this and keeping this. You guys will recognize this because I spun this um, as singles. Um, I can't remember what the fiber was. I think it was, I had Polworth silk and I spun it as singles. This is a discontinued colorway. This is Superwash BFL in Bourbon by Sweet Georgia. I have a lot of Sweet Georgia in my stash because of teaching there and I love the colors. So this is my favorite colorway and I totally understand why they just continued it. It's because the blue, that tealy blue, it, it isn't color fast. So I get it, but I love that colorway regardless. Um, and then I have another braid of that and it's Panda, the Panda base. And again, the bourbon colorway. This one's put away, I actually put it in a bag because it was getting really beaten up in my stash. So I um, I put it in a bag to keep it, keep it safe. Um, but I'm hoping, I do wanna get through some of this stuff. Like I've been saving it and saving it and saving it and you know, for what? Um, you know, I, I, I need to spin some of this stuff. So that is my super wash stash. I actually was surprised when I was going through my stash and, and going through all of my fiber and all the stuff that I have, I have to say, I was actually surprised at how much I don't have. Um, I, about eight, two years ago, my stash got really, really, really big. And um, there's nothing wrong with having a big stash. Lot, like the, the most recent Sheep Spot um, podcast, she was you know celebrating stash and talking about why it's good for fiber artists to have a stash. Um, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with having a stash, but mine was getting too big because I don't have anywhere to store it. So I've been really consciously trying to spin it down a little bit to make it a bit more manageable. And I was really, really surprised at how much I've actually spun through. Like I kind of need to like join a fiber club or something because I don't have very much fiber anymore. Like some of the projects that I've been planning for next year to spin um, because we've decided to do um, for patrons... We're gonna spin through, it's gonna take us two years. We're gonna spin through 51 Yarns by JC Boggs Faulkner. Um, we're gonna do that um, in the Slack channel and um, on uh, through, through um, um, just work our way through. I've kind of mapped it out roughly how it's gonna go. I was doing some project planning and figuring out like what I had that I could use for some of the projects I've actually spun through so much of my stash that I'm gonna have to buy some stuff, which is really cool. Um, and it makes me really excited for some of the um, holes or gaps that I have in my stash now um, because it's stuff that I've used and I've really enjoyed. Like this was sitting in my stash for, for a while and it spun um, and it took up, like that was like eight ounces that I dyed. And I gave four to my friend Chrissy of the Snappy Stitches podcast and then I spun the last, the other eight, the other six and I'm gonna get a big blanket out of it, but still, like it's a big amount of stuff that's like out of my stash. I did that big, um, uh, this one, the the Romney um, mohair spin, that was a huge amount out of my stash. That was two pounds, almost two pounds. Um, my baby llama uh, Tessa silk spin that I've been working on that I've put on hold because my friend Leah is borrowing my Lendrum. Um, that's another pound out of my stash. So it's really amazing how you, you know, you start making some of these big dents in your stash. You're all of a sudden like, wow, like it's not as big as it once was. I actually have room to store it now. And I even have some gaps, which is pretty cool. So, um, hi Megan. 
So I do need to go fiber shopping. I need, um, you know what I need? You guys are gonna laugh. Uh, one of the yarns that's right at the beginning of the, um, the study, the 51 yarn study, is I definitely don't need any down wool. I'm good for down. <laughs> I have about a pound of Suffolk and a pound of Cheviot in my stash. Um, I need double coated wool. I don't have any. And that's yarns five through seven. I need some Icelandic or some Navajo Churro or some Caracol or some Scottish Blackface. So I really do have to buy some yarn, which is kind of exciting. It's kind of cool. Um, some of the other yarns that I need or that I would like, some of the other fiber that I would like to um, add, I would like to get some locks um, for tail spinning. That's yarn number 12. I have some locks, but they're, they're not in very good shape. And I'd rather just use them on my on my drum carter. Um, yeah, so it's kind of exciting. So that is what is in my basket. Um, there are lots of Icelandic fleece at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. Yes, but I am in Canada. <laughs> um, I don't want an entire fleece. I actually just want like 100 grams of it so that I can comb it and separate the tog from the thel and spin a little bit of it together, a little bit of it separate. Because the yarn five is just the tog or the thel, yarn six is the tog, and yarn seven is the tog and the thel together. I've actually spun the tog and the thel together. There was a spunky eclectic um, uh, braid that I had that the tog and the thel were together, and it was a lovely yarn to spin. I made singles. Um, I did them on my spindle, but I, um, I don't have any that I can comb apart, so yeah. All right, I think that's it for today. I'm just looking at the uh, chat channel just to make sure that I'm not missing anybody. Um, oh, you were volunteering in your kid's kindergarten class. I'm glad you could make it, Meg. Um, good to see you. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Katrina did a three-ply for the Sweet Georgia blog. Um, she did a three-ply out of this one, the Moonshine colorway. It was gorgeous. Didn't you three -ply? Did you three-ply it? Yeah, traditional three ply. It looked amazing. Um, and I was thinking about doing a traditional three ply, but I, I also kind of, because Katrina did the three ply, I was even thinking about doing a four ply with this one, just so that her and I could compare the differences. Because I she you haven't knit with that yarn yet, I don't think. So we could we could compare, which would be kind of cool. Does anybody have any other like questions or comments before we say goodbye? Um, it was very weaving heavy this week. I hope that that was okay. Um, I'm going to try, I'm really going to try to get a little bit more weaving in um, to my crafting. I think it's something that um, like I really enjoy and I'd kind of forgotten how much I enjoyed it so or enjoy it. So I hope that that is something that fits with what you're looking for. The one last thing that I was going to share with you. So this yarn um, I had leftovers of the S spun and the Z spun singles, and this is what they ended up looking like. So this is, I don't even know which is which. This is the S spun singles plied Z. Look at how bouncy and floofy that is. It really puffed up, really puffed up. And then this is the um, S spun singles it puffed up as well. Like, look at how puffy these are compared to the yarn. Let's see if I can get my face out of there. There we go. Get it to focus. The yarn did not poof up as much as the um, as much as these did. So these, without the opposing ply in there, and they are they are chain plied, did not poof up as much as as the opposing ply yarn did. Um, I think that tight, more tightly twisted single in there, that third single that was spun the opposite way, and I, I think it kept the yarn from poofing up as much because that third ply was wrapping around and keeping everything a bit tighter, which is sort of interesting. So it isn't as poofy as the other two skeins. So, yeah. That was, I forgot to say that, and then I looked down and I saw these, and I, I know that I meant to uh, mention about that. Um, 51 Yarns is by J.C. Boggs Faulkner. You can get it on the Ply Magazine website in their shop. Um, it's not a book that's been released uh, for sale on places like Amazon and stuff. Um, and it's a beautifully illustrated book. Um, it's $24 US. It's paperback. It's fully illustrated, and it's actually full color, so which is kind of neat. Um, yeah. 
And the other book that I mentioned was Inventive Weaving on a Little Loom. I will link to that in the show notes. And the other book that I mentioned was um, A Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs, which I was showing you pages out of. That's this one, and it's by Sarah Anderson. So for the weaver who wants to get going on a rigid heddle, I think Inventive Weaving is probably a pretty great place to start. Um, and this book is a pretty great place for a spinner who's sort of making that jump from beginner to intermediate and wants to start learning more and wants to push their skills a bit. This is a great, a great book. So I think that's everything for today. Um, oh, the Woolery carries 51 yarns as well. I did not know that, Alex. Thank you. Huh. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. The show will be released to patrons tonight and will be available for the next couple of days. And then the show will become public and um, show notes will be available sometime on Friday. Um, so until then, happy spinning. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Happy Thanksgiving from here in Canada. And um, I hope it's a restful weekend for those who are have a long weekend because of Thanksgiving. I hope you're not having to make a big, massive Thanksgiving dinner and instead are able to spin and knit and have some quiet time. That's what a great weekend sounds like to me. It might not be for you. Maybe you like having a big fancy dinner. So if so, have a wonderful time. And until next time, um, happy spinning. Bye, everyone.